Come on, kids. Come on, Sass. Okay, good kids. Yeah, it's hot out there, isn't it? Yeah. Man, late May, Atlanta, and it is hot. So, you know, how do you beat the heat? I mean, iced tea is great and all, but it sloshes around and it spills. Somebody would have a million dollar idea if they came up with some kind of snack that would take the edge off, keep you cool, you know? But wait, somebody's already done that. So what is this cooling confection? And how did it come about? That is worth checking out. Hey, Ted here. Now, to give credit where credit is due, it was the Romans who figured out that they could send their slaves up into the mountains to retrieve blocks of ice, which they would then chop up and blend with fruit and spice syrups. But this was not easily transportable or in any way ethical. No, the cool, colorful confection I'm talking about got its start with an 11-year-old boy, Frank Epperson, who lived in Oakland, California in 1905. One evening, after adding some powdered drink mix to a glass of water and stirring it to mix it with a stick, Frank got distracted, as 11-year-olds often do, and left his potion on the porch. It froze that night, and the next morning, Frank, finding his solidified soda, ran the glass under warm water and retrieved the inglorious ice. Frank loved it, called it an epsicle, and began selling them to his neighborhood buddies. Now, Frank's parents were not behind the idea at all, but when Frank became an adult, he started selling the Serenity on a Stick up and down the California coast and applied for a patent in 1924. Now, part of that patent read, and I will quote here, frozen ice on a stick, because evidently the unfrozen ice didn't really adhere very well to the stick. Now, the name he was using was Epsicles. Fortunately, his children had come up with a different name. They had been referring to them as Pop's Sickles. And Frank listened to his kids. The name changed, the rest is history. Though business was bountiful, Frank got into financial trouble and sold his patent to the Joe Low Company, which took the brand to the East Coast, where on one day alone, they sold 8,000 sublime sickles at Coney Island for five cents each. In a piece of marketing genius, the company added an extra stick to the sickle during the depression so that two children could enjoy the pugnacious pop for the price of one. Last year, there were over two billion popsicles sold. So parents, you might want to listen to your kids. They might have some um, cool ideas. I hope this has been fun and informative. For more fun recipes, travel tips, and videos, check out our website at www.historybytheplate.com. As a matter of fact, this Friday I'm posting some recipes for some adult versions of the uh, frozen confection. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is fun and free. And if you have any questions about food history, just put them in the comments section below and I will see what I can do to get to them. In the meantime, happy cooking.